Game for fun ask very good tutorial but what if I use my character and not a standard asset? And Caesar Oliveira ask how to make a third person shooter. These are two problems that we will tackle right now. Here you see the final result. Here's my character. I can look around and run. And I can also aim and shoot at things. So let's start with the first part and this is our own character controller. We start with the scene we've created in our last tutorial. If you haven't done already, watch the tutorial, the link is in the description. You need most of the parts now, so watch that video first and then come back. We will start by deleting the third person controller because we will write our own. Then we go to the store and search for the sci-fi soldier and then we import this package. And here is the sci-fi soldier. Uh, this is a very nice asset. It's, it's for free, so uh, you can use any other asset. You can use your own model. Um, so basically what this is doing is it's just one model and uh, all the animations and no logic behind it. And after I import the asset, there is a new folder called uwm. Uh, click on the folder, go to characters, sci-fi soldier and there is the sci-fi soldier. The one that has colors is the right one. You just back and drop it in your scene. It's a little bit too small for our scene. I will scale the complete um, character a little bit bigger and um, we will add some components to it. The first component is the widget body. Um, we will leave the values as they are. We just freeze the rotation because we want to re uh, we want to do the rotation by ourselves. The next thing we need is a capsule collider, and we have to adjust the capsule collider so that it fits to the model. So it should be a little bit bigger. Um, it should start on the ground. If we have a look here. It looks quite right. If this would be a little bit more. Like this. And I think that's it. Uh, it looks pretty good. I don't want um, to be it too small because then you run into um, the walls. Um, you have to remember that these characters get animated and that they maybe um, put a leg forward and then it's directly into the wall and this won't look good. So. The next thing is we need a new own third person controller. So I call it own third person controller. And this is our new script and we will edit the script. So this is a part where you should have seen already the previous video where I showed how to integrate the third person controller because we will reuse the UI elements and this is very important because um, otherwise you won't understand or won't see what I'm doing here. So uh, we create a few variables um, for the joysticks. So there's a fixed joystick, left joystick. We have the fixed button. This will be our shoot button. And we have a public fixed touch field. Okay, so now we will need some other um, variables. I will fast forward the video now and we will come back as soon as I type them all. And here we go. So you should pause the video now if you want to just copy all the variables. Um, so I will go quickly through this list. These are the UI fields that tells us which buttons the player presses. Um, these are actions and player controller. So um, this is specific for this character because it has a player controller and actions and we want to access some of these. So basically these scripts are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. For example, <clears throat> if you call walk, it will set some animator 
um, properties and start the animation. So it's just a shortcut for the animator. <clears throat> the next thing is a player controller. Um, this is a simple script to equip the web. So um, now as soon as you give a name to this method, the player will switch a weapon. You can see all the weapons that are equipped to the player <coughs> right here. So um, the model itself comes with an empty weapon and a rifle and we will use it to equip the rifle later on. So then we need the widget body because we want to implement our own third person controller and this is the main feature of it uh, or the main component of it the widget body, uh, it will receive the velocity and some other values. Uh, here we have the camera angle. We will use it in the same way as we did in the last tutorial and the camera position, we will use this um, to have some kind of a steering. So uh, these three components will be set directly on start because they are on the game object itself as a component. And uh, these three values we will set right now in the editor. Uh, just open the canvas, set the fixed joystick to the joystick, image to the touch field, and the handle to the button. So if this is new to you, you should watch the um, previous tutorial where I showed how to do or how to make a third person controller um, with these UI elements. And basically what I did is just assign the left joystick here, uh, the button here and the touch field, which is here. I can show it to you. There we go. This is a touch field where we can touch. Okay, now we should star uh, start and um, create an input vector by creating new vector three, left joystick, input vector x, 0, left joystick, input vector y, and there we go. Now we have the vector 2 of our input vector converted into a vector 3. And the next thing we can calculate is the velocity. And this is the quaternion angle axis camera angle y plus 180 vector speed up. So we are rotating around the up vector by the camera angle. So why do we need this? Uh, I can um, say this to you right now because we will multiply this by the input and by a fixed constant value. So this is the player speed. As soon as you change this, you will change the speed. This is the input. It will walk directly into the direction you're pushing. So if you're pushing forward, it will, uh, so the player will move forward. But um, what forward directly is and what backward is and left is and right is, is defined by the camera angle. Because when you're pushing forward, you should um, go into the, direction you are looking right now with your camera. So, and this velocity we will apply directly to the widget body. So widget body velocity is new vector three, velocity x, widget body velocity y, velocity z. So this is not directly our velocity. We could have done something like that, but uh, then we will override the y value. And especially if you're jumping or something like that, um, the physics engine will calculate the way up and the way down by itself. And you just want to modify the x and z values based on your joystick. The next thing we will do is to adjust the camera angle. It's touch field, uh, touch disk x times 
camera angle speed yeah, as soon as we touch and uh, drag on the x-axis the camera angle will be modified and then we have to apply this later on so camera main transform position this is the first value we will set is transform position so the camera is directly on the position of the player um, then we will apply the rotation um, quaternion angle axis camera x angle y and again the vector speed up so now we are rotating around the axis of the player and uh, we should multiply it by new vector 3 for example x 0 3 4 so this is a distance from the player to the camera and this will be rotated around the camera angle we will modify it with this touch field and that's probably it for the first test. So here we go, we can move forward, backwards, sidewards, but we can't rotate in the way we want it to be. Um, the camera rotation is missing, but besides that, everything is working great. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, camera main transform rotation equals quotidian, same thing again. Uh, look rotation, transform position, plus vector 3 up times 2f, minus camera main transform position, vector 3 up. Okay, it, it looks cryptic, but it's, it's really simple. So what we want to do is we want to rotate the camera so that it looks at something so uh, and the something is the transform position so we have to uh, specify a vector between the camera and the transform position and this is a look rotation so here's the camera position here's the transform but we will add a vector so we will add an up vector because we will look at the feed if we just um, specify transform position but we want to look at the head and the head is two a unit above the ground. So this is the head of the uh, character and this is our camera position and the vector 3 up we will need this because otherwise the camera wouldn't stay stable. Uh, it would be otherwise the camera can be upside down if we uh, would put vector 3 down in it or um, other things would happen. There we go, we can rotate around the character, we can move forward, left, right, and that's it. Looks pretty good. We have to rotate the character and animate the camera character and then we're good to go. First we will rotate the character. This is pretty straightforward. We have to set transform rotation. So, and this trans uh, rotation depends on several things like the camera angle and the angle we are pressing right now. So uh, the rotation is a quaternion and we will use the angle axis to specify the rotation. It's the camera angle uh, y. So and vector 3 up and this brings us a little bit further. Looks quite good. We should um, add 180 degrees, but as soon as we go left or right, uh, the player should turn as well. So we have to um, add uh, the input vector in our equation. We will get the signed angle between a forward vector and an input normalized, and this will be added to our camera angle. So looks quite fine. The problem is when you do not input anything, uh, this will be a null vector and if you want to have a signed angle between a forward vector and a null vector anything can come out of this equation so you should add a, at least a little bit um, of, of some vector for example a forward a a vector would be fine 
So we just add a little bit as if the player would push a little bit forward. But we won't move the character because this will be done by the velocity. Looks better now. Uh, let me just add the 180. You see when we are rotating the camera, um, the rotation is pushing forward, so the character is moving in the direction we are looking. But if we just give a wheel input, the wheel input will oversteer the small value. Okay, let's do the animation. The animation is pretty simple for this uh, character. We just say, okay, if the widget body velocity magnitude is bigger than a certain value, for example, three, we call this action class and the action class Have a method called one, and this will just trigger um, the animator with a one variable. So if you're um, new to animator and some stuff, uh, I can give you an info card to a tutorial, a four-part tutorial on how you can create your own character, and you do not have to rely on any character that's out in the asset store. So if you do not run, we can um, do other things like rest, or I think they called it a little bit differently. Yeah, it's stay. Okay, we run or we stay. Okay, let's try this out. And there we go. Slowly we are running. Okay, there's one part we can put in between. And um, this could be a magnitude around maybe 0 0.5. And this is actions walk. So um, the velocity magnitude is, is this one special thing um, because if you have the velocity, this is a vector and the magnitude of the vector defines the speed. So. I'm just asking nothing else than is the speed greater than 3. But the speed is not defined. We could define it by rigid body velocity magnitude. But we will leave it as it is because it's working fine. And I would say that's it for today. We have the character. We can move around. And this is all we wanted for today. And uh, on the next part, I will show you how I did this shoot animation, how we can shoot things, how we can add shoot real things in the scene. And see you then.